of this video is to help you with solving equations and inequalities that involve absolute values. First, I'd like to introduce the definition of an absolute value. An absolute value is the distance of a number from zero on a number line. For example, if we wanted to solve for the absolute value of x, which is equal to 3, we want to find all numbers whose distance from 0 is 3. So if we look at a number line, it's obvious that the number 3 is a distance of 3 from 0. So the number 3 has a distance of 3 units away from 0. So 3 would be one of the solutions to the equation because the absolute value of 3 is indeed 3. The absolute value of the number 3, what is the distance that 3 is from 0? Well, it is 3 units away. But there is another number. There's always another number on the other side of 0. In this case, negative 3 would also be a distance of 3 units away from 0. So the number negative 3 would also be one of the solutions. You could see that the absolute value of negative 3 is also 3, because the absolute value of negative 3 means what is the distance that negative 3 is away from 0? And the answer would be 3 units away. So for this particular problem, we are going to have two possible solutions. For every equation that involves absolute values, you will always have two solutions. So in general, as a general equation to solve for these, the absolute value of any number equals a means the solutions are going to be the positive version of a but also the negative version of A. So you'll always have two solutions. Generally speaking, to solve an equation that has an absolute value, you're going to follow these steps. The first thing you're going to do is isolate the absolute value. So in other words, you want the absolute value with whatever inside, and you want the equal sign and everything else on the other side. This absolute value must be alone. In other words, it cannot have any other data before or after it. It has to be isolated. The next step is to drop the absolute value symbol. So in the next step, we'll actually drop these and get rid of them and just leave what's inside. Then the last part says we're going to write two separate equations. One will equal the positive version of this side, and the other one will equal the negative version of this right side. So let's run through some examples. Here we're asked to solve the following equations. The first one is the absolute value of x minus 6 is equal to 5. So the first step says to isolate the absolute value. You can see that this absolute value is already alone on the left side of the equal sign. So that step is already done. Then we're going to drop the absolute value symbol. Then we're going to write two equations. The first one will equal the positive version of this right side, and the other one will equal the negative version of this right side. And then we solve both of these equations for x. So there will be, in for sure, two separate solutions. Well, you can see if I add 6 to both sides, I get x equals 11. If I add 6 to both sides, I get x equals 1. So I have two solutions, the first one at 1 and the next one at 11. Of course, these can always be checked. If I wanted to check these solutions, I would plug both 1 and 11 up into the original equation. So I would see is, in fact, 1 minus 6 equal to 5. Well, this is the absolute value of negative 5 
And in fact, the absolute value of negative 5 suggests that the distance that negative 5 is from 0 is 5 units away. Of course, we want to check the other solution. So we're also going to check 11. So we ask, is 11 minus 6 absolute value equal to 5? The absolute value of 5 is indeed 5. 5 is a distance of 5 units away. So it turns out that these are indeed the only two solutions. Let's try another one. This time we're left with an absolute value minus 3 equals 10. So the first thing we're going to do again is isolate the absolute value symbol. So it means we're going to need to get this guy all alone on the left hand side. So the first thing we're going to need to do is add the 3 to the other side so that way the absolute value is isolated. So that's going to give me absolute value of 2x plus 1 is equal to 13. The next thing we're going to do is drop the absolute value symbol and write two equations. So the first one will say that the left side equals 13, and the next one will say that the left side equals negative 13. So one equation will say 2x plus 1 is 13, and the other one will say 2x plus 1 is negative 13. And then we're going to solve both equations and find two answers. So let's subtract 1 from both sides. Divide by 2. So there's my first solution. Here we'll subtract 1 from both sides. Divide by 2. So there's my two solutions. x equals 6 and x equals negative 7. So I would write that as x equals negative 7 and 6. Of course, you would check these answers just by doing the same method we did over here, and you'll find that both answers do check. Now we're going to work on solving inequalities. Up here, we're solving equations. Equations involve equal signs. So down here, we're going to switch it and now solve with inequality symbols. There is a difference when there is a less than versus a greater than. And as we go through the notes, you'll see the difference between the direction of the sign. The first thing we always do is to solve and find all numbers whose distance from zero on a number line is in fact less than five. So for example, if here's zero and here's five, I'm looking for the distance of all numbers so that way the distance is less than five units away from zero. Any number in this area is going to have a distance that is less than five. But of course we would not include five because if we included five that would be five units away. And you can see here that five is not included. So any number between zero to five, five not including, would have a distance that is less than five units away. But also, so would any number in the negative direction. So any number in the negative direction also has a distance that is less than five units away from zero. Again, we would not include negative five because negative five would be five units away. And we're not including five. So to answer the question down here, we would want any number, the solutions would be any number between negative 5 all the way up to 5. We would also say non-inclusive because the endpoints are not included. So in general, the absolute value of x is less than 5 generally means that x can be any number between the negative version and the positive version of the right-hand side of the equation. So this is the general form of how we're going to solve the equations above. So let's look at a couple of examples of what we've already been learning. The first one is solving less than inequality symbols. So here we've got an absolute value of x minus 2, which is less than 6. First thing we're going to do is we're going to isolate the absolute value symbol on one side. 
Then we're going to drop the symbol, and we're going to write one compound inequality. Negative A will be on the left-hand side, and A will be on the right-hand side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve this inequality by writing not only the inequality, but also the graphical solution and what's called the interval notation. So I'm going to solve this three different ways. So for the first one, we're going to isolate the absolute value. That is the very first step, and it turns out that this is already isolated, so that step is already done. Then we drop the absolute value symbol, and we write one compound inequality with negative of the right-hand side on the left, and positive of the right-hand side on the right. And we say that x minus 2 lies in between these two numbers. Notice that these signs will always point in the same direction. You will never see two signs that are pointing towards each other or away. They will always be pointing the same direction. So what I'm going to do is solve for x. One, I'm going to add 2 to all three parts. If I add 2 to all three parts, that gives me x in the middle, 8 on the right, and negative 4 on the left. So you can see that x lies in between these two values. So if I put negative 4 and 8 on a number line, if I graph everything in between, I would shade everything in between those two numbers. Now you can say, see that this was non-inclusive. There is no underline, so therefore the endpoints are not included. Also, you'll notice that I shaded the correct direction because you want to look at these as two separate inequalities. The first one actually says that x is less than 8. And you can see from 8, I definitely shade to the left because I want everything less than 8. On the other side, if I cover up this, I can see that this says x is greater than negative 4. So I'm going to shade everything greater than negative 4. So the only area that these two inequalities, x minus is less than 8, and x is greater than negative 4 have in common, would be only the area in between those two numbers. This would be the graphical solution. This would be the inequality solution. Interval notation, we write the left-hand lower bound smaller number, comma, the right bound upper number or bigger number, and then we show whether they're included or not by showing the parentheses around the outsides. So I have shown this particular answer in three different ways. We could write it as an inequality, as a graph, and also an interval notation. You will need to know all three types. So let's try one more. This time the absolute value of 2 plus 4 is less than or equal to 3. So again, this is a less than, just like the last question. So we've got to recognize that fact, and then we isolate the radical. The radical has already been isolated for us, so the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to drop the absolute value symbol and write one compound inequality as is, but don't forget the left-hand side by showing it's also bigger than its negative version. Then we solve for x. So we're going to subtract 4 from all three parts. So I have negative 7 is less than or equal to 2x, which is less than or equal to negative 1. Once I divide all three parts by 2, I have my solution, which says x is greater than or equal to negative 7 halves, but it's also less than or equal to negative 1 half. Now I'm going to show that on the number line. If we look over here at the number line, I'm going to show every number that's in between negative 1 half to negative 7 halves. And I'm going to show you everything in between those two numbers. Since these are included on the endpoints, I show inclusivity by showing square brackets instead of the rounded parentheses. 
as integral notation, I start at the left at negative 7 halves, and I go all the way to the right to negative 1 half. Be very careful that you don't accidentally reverse these two numbers. If you put negative 1 half on the left hand side, then you're seeing that this number is smaller than this number. The number on the left will always be the smaller of the two. The number on the right will always be the bigger of the two. So make sure you put them in order, otherwise uh, it's technically a wrong answer. The last part for this section is to deal with inequalities, this time of the greater than type. So you're going to notice that the sign now is going to change direction. The problem is solved slightly different in that to solve these, we want a distance from zero that is more than four. So on a number line, we want any number on this number line that is a distance that is more than four away from zero. So we're not looking for anything less than four, we're looking for a distance that is more than four away. So it's actually going to be anything to the right. This distance has a distance of greater than 4 away from 0. But you see, we're going to have another area on the left-hand side that also has a distance that is more than 4 units away from 0. Any number in this red-shaded area also has a distance that is greater than 4 units away from 0. So you can see when you look at the shaded area, how it is very different than what we had on the first page, which we were showing everything in between two numbers. Here we're showing area that is moving away from zero, meaning it's greater than, so we're looking for distances that are, that are big. So there's actually two separate intervals here, which are not connected or discontinuous in the middle. So when we're looking to write the solutions, we write all the solutions in this area, which would be from negative infinity up to negative 4, and also the area from 4 all the way up to positive infinity. And we put a union symbol in between, which represents the word union or the word or, which means the same thing. So in a general form, the absolute value of x, which is greater than a, we would write as negative infinity to negative a, or from a to positive infinity. So we have to be very careful when we're dealing with greater than symbols. Greater than symbols are going to yield two separate solutions, where in the past, if it was less than, oops, if it was less than, like this one, less than symbols, they yielded one complex solution where everything was in between. So we have to be very careful with the sign. We have to note what type of sign we have first before we proceed. So on the last page, we're going to practice two of these types. So we'll notice the directions, which tell us it's very similar to how it always starts, which is isolate the absolute value. This one already is. So then we're going to drop the symbol and we're going to write two inequalities. The first one is just the original. Nothing changes other than we drop the absolute value symbols. The second one, however, we're going to change the direction of the inequality. And we're also going to make the right hand side negative. So now we have two inequalities for which we will solve and find the two parts of the graph. So let's add 5 to both sides and divide by 2. Same over here, let's add 5 to both sides and divide by 2. So on the number line, we're going to have 0 and 5 as our boundaries. And let's look at where we're going to shade. 
This one says x is less than 0. So I'm going to shade everywhere less than 0. This one says x is greater than 5. So I'm going to shade everything to the right of 5. And you can see that these are going in opposite directions. So the interval notation would look like this. We would go everywhere from negative infinity to 0, or any solution from 5 to positive infinity. You might ask yourself, how can you check such a thing? Well, you can. You just have to arbitrarily pick any number in either of these shaded red areas. So for example, a number in this red shaded area would be, for example, the number 7. So if I wanted to check to see if x equals 7 is a solution, I plug that in. 2 times 7 minus 5, is that greater than 5? Well, this is 14 minus 5. The absolute value of 9 is 9, and yes, indeed, 9 is greater than 5. I can also check a number on this side. Any number to the direction or less than 0 would be, for example, negative 2. So if I want to check to see if x could be also negative 2, I plug that in. So 2 times negative 2 minus 5, is that indeed greater than 5? Well, this is negative 4 minus 5, so that's the absolute value of negative 9. The absolute value of negative 9 is positive 9, and indeed, 9 is greater than 5. So it turns out any number on both of these red shaded areas would indeed be a solution. If I tried a number in between, we're going to find it will not work. So for example, if I tried 2, we find out that doesn't work. Let me try that down here. If I tried x is 2, we're going to get absolute value of 2 times 2 minus 5 is greater than 5. 4 minus 5 is negative 1. Absolute value of negative 1 is 1. And you can see that 1 is not greater than 5. So that means this would not be a solution. OK, last question. Let's do one more. This time we have absolute value of 5x plus 2 minus 1 is greater than or equal to 2. All right, so first thing we need to do is isolate this absolute value. So that means add 1 to both sides of the inequality. So we have absolute value of 5x plus 2 is greater than or equal to 3. Once that's been isolated, I recognize that the sign is greater than. When the sign is greater than, that means we're going to create two separate inequalities. The first one we will leave as is. The second one, we reverse the sign and make the right side negative. Then we solve. Subtract 2 from both sides and divide by 5. Subtract 2 from both sides and divide by 5. So on a number line, you can see that I'm going to put as my boundary points 1 fifth and negative 1. So here's negative 1, here's 1 fifth, and I'm going to shade everywhere where x is less than or equal to negative 1. I'm also going to shade everywhere where x is greater than or equal to 1 fifth. So this would be my solution set. And in interval notation, I would write this as from negative infinity to negative 1 or from 1 fifth to infinity. Also notice that I never include infinity and I never include negative infinity. And the reason why we don't include the endpoints is because infinity is actually not a number. It's just an idea of the farthest place you can go in the number system. But it doesn't really exist. We can't get there. So therefore, we can't include that intangible quantity.